we were uh, involved in different kind of webinars. For example, with awareness resorts, we have created the webinars when they are technicians and their doctors or you know uh, their um, uh, staff who are involved in this has been given a special uh, yoga classes for us, our team and our clients. Some impact of how do you prepare your breakfast, for example, to keep your energy high, you know, to boost your immune system. So it creates a lot of different things that the people never was interested to go and read about or to learn about. Suddenly, everybody became the health oriented. They, uh, you know, they became very, uh, you know, professional in the way how they manage their day to day routine. So from my point of view, uh, despite of all the negative effects which we have seen, for us and for my team, I, uh, you know, got the reply that they are, they are, they are become more uh, conscious about their expenses, about the way how they live day to day, how they live day to day activities, in the personal perspective and the work wise. So, despite that all this negative, the human nature is will forget forget it very quickly. We have. Uh, being given the beauty that we forget the bad, the negative, and we will continue the positive things which we, uh, the knowledge, the skills, we will continue to live with it. So I am more positive that we have to focus on all positive things which we gain during this negative uh, period. Great, great. Thank you so much, Diana. Uh, it's true that many businesses have uh, done like you did and set up some yoga classes for their staff and um, and some some activities to keep their their business going and their staff uh, engaged and and it's good to hear that from you uh, thank you so much my dear friend Raj uh, thank welcome to the speaker panel thank you um, uh, so I would like to ask you, it's almost the same question, but I would like to ask you, uh, what's the feedback that you heard from your subscribers? You, the, that you are a person that deal with so many travel agencies and you listen to travel agents on a daily basis and you speak to so many people. Uh, what's the feedback on the on your subscribers on the impact of the COVID-19 on their business and on their staff and also what was your personal experience on this? Thank you very much Joe for having me on this uh, TTS Talks Middle East. I'm really privileged I didn't know I was uh, capable of uh, talking here but uh, when I go back to see my history of, of being in this industry, I have spent almost uh, 20 years in the GDS. I saw the GDS uh, evolving, you know, from Sabre to, to travel port. Okay. Uh, that, uh, when you're talking about 1960s, uh, when the first GDS was formed, you know, that's the time uh, I'm, I, I was, it was in my dreams. So <laughs> when I joined, when I joined uh, 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 the first GDS, uh, I don't want to name them, it was somewhere in 1995. Okay, so then that's when it was evolving and people did not know what GDS was. Okay, now, uh, why is GDS important is one thing. And here, when I talk about a small country like Kuwait, where uh, it's, it's, a, it is, uh, it's a country with a lot of potential, the travel is, uh, is something which I would say is, uh, is uh, for a per, per, per individual, it is four times a year minimum. Okay, and then the, you are talking about uh, the population, which is 60% expats and 40% locals. So you can imagine the traffic that is going outbound. There is not much of inbound traffic, uh, traffic and I would say tourism is almost 0.05%. So the, 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 we are looking at uh, a, a travel which is uh, year on all, year on year and the same pattern. Okay, everything, the seasonal pattern, of course, the Ramadan will come, the Eid will come, but the Eid comes forward. Okay. And why am I touching all these topics, uh, subjects is to un make you understand how a business trend works in Kuwait. The business trend in Kuwait is very, very methodical. 
the season comes, season goes, then everybody is uh, happy. They made their money. The business uh, uh, goes to the next phase of low season. Then again, come back to the high season of uh, Christmas, New Year's, and then again back. And then they party. So this is how life goes. It's a small town, small village uh, with high potential. Now, uh, the first time they were hit was in 1990s when, uh, when there was an invasion. And I think that must have been the worst ever, ever in this country. And people were dislocated all over. And they, uh, they had to really restructure their lives, restructure their uh, infrastructure. They had to build up so much to come back. And, and I really admire them for coming back where they have been displaced. They came back, they built everything. And along with that, the travel industry was also uh, coming up. And wh where, where can they go? They can go anywhere in the world. The, uh, the locals, they study in US, they study in UK. The students are almost 60,000 <laughs> traffic out, going out of Kuwait, 60,000 students. So, and the expats to their regional countries are very high. You know, you, you can imagine uh, uh, a very huge inbound and, out, sorry, inbound and outbound traffic of only expats coming to work and go on holidays. So suddenly this, the COVID comes in, the coronavirus hits us uh, from the 13th of March, the government decides, yes, now it's time to be safe, uh, then sorry. So they closed the airport by on the 13th. Since then, we are all waiting. Of course, uh, uh, thanks to the government, we are much, much more safer here. The, the numbers are very low. The, we, uh, the, the curfew has been very high. But what has hit us badly is when the travel agencies were completely uh, uh, taken off balance. And they, were, uh, they had already booked up for the whole season for Eid, which is coming in, uh, in uh, it, which came in April and went. Yeah. And then, they had, then came the cancellations because they were expecting that the flights will open on Eid, but they did not happen. So we had to cancel all the bookings from a, from 110 percent growth, that means the 10 percent growth over last year, the business came down to minus 100 percent. Or even yeah. the GDS was minus 100 percent, and then was the market. So then the cancellation started pouring in, the reissues, the refunds, all the airlines are grounded. The travel agencies were in a panic situation because they had to pay refunds, they had to give reissues. To be done. And I can imagine the nightmare they have gone through. Of course, we were assisting them uh, because Travelport has a page where all the airlines uh, reissue refund uh, procedures are there. So we were sharing with them. We were communicating with the with the market on a day to day basis. Our team is, was fully geared. Everybody was wor wor uh, working from home. WFH, okay, and they got used to the idea of working from home. Okay, that's every morning we have a 9.30 Zoom, call on the Zoom. We tried team, then we call on Zoom, and then everybody was connected. Everybody was happy that uh, I'm taking the initiative to, uh, to call them every morning. So I have to get up early every morning. <laughs> <laughs> so this has happened and uh, people were getting, uh, you know, uh, connected to the customers, asking them, uh, making them feel that we are there. Okay. Here, oh, now I can see a pretty face. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, so we kept on uh, connecting to the market, and then we realized that uh, the market was looking for an opportunity to uh, to come back. But then, without the airport operation, it's very very difficult to imagine anything. Then came the charters, where because we have a uh, since it's a highly uh, densely populated expat uh, uh, population here, they had to be uh, you know, repatriated. Repatriation was the biggest business at this time. So taking back the, uh, the, uh, the, the expats to their respective countries, the governments gradually opened. And this does not come through the GDS. It has to go through uh, ad hoc flights. Yeah. So the ad hoc flights have carried almost 50,000 uh, uh, passengers pro to various regional countries, largely to India, then to Egypt, and then uh, Bangladesh. These are the countries which are 
we, we have a large concentration of people. So this business has gone out of the GDS, but it has, uh, but we have to look at the priority of, of the government, how they wanted to manage this. Because uh, the airport was open only for charters and uh, only few airlines have operated and delivered them back home because the countries were also not ready to receive them. And even today, we are waiting for the markets to open. So uh, if you ask me psychologically, the travel agents are, are, are having a bad time, really having a bad time. But fortunately, they had a good year in 2019. So how much are they being provided? We will come to know only once uh, we open. I think we are expecting next week for the markets to open by 30%. So the 30% of the employees can go to the office. <clears throat> so uh, this is a very different uh, approach and very careful and very well planned. And uh, I really admire the government for managing this very well in Kuwait. Now, pers on my personal view, I have never had such a beautiful uh, experience as a holiday for such a long time in my 40 years of career. <laughs> I spent so much of time at home bonding with my wife sometimes fighting with her and she fights with me but we work together so we get a, a better results uh, every day from this uh, interaction then uh, then we we were locked up for some time we couldn't go out so we had to manage uh, our home uh, cook for each other you know provide for each other and then the life becomes such a fantastic uh, you know dream come true situation <laughs> okay so we have really managed well you know and there, i i have no complaints uh, only only the uh, uh, only worry which i always carry with me is to how how can i help the people who needs help yeah. this has always been my intention because i've been back, we have worked here for many years we know uh, who needs what sometimes there are a lot of people who are expats who have lost their jobs they don't have a home to go they don't have uh, money to pay the rents uh, you know, so there are situations which needs to be uh, coped up. So now we are, what we're trying to do is we are looking at the customers who have, who have to be provided. We are trying to give them some help through our uh, local office. Okay, so this will be done from next week onwards. We will start giving them uh, uh, shopping vouchers to, to help them provide for, uh, uh, for, for at least a daily meal. Okay, so these are all plans which we have in our, uh, our thought. These are all personal. Uh, this is how I look at it personally. Okay. And, uh, overall, I see that this market is going to evolve. It has to be a careful growth. It cannot uh, jump from a, from a zero to 100. It's going to be zero to 30. And then we almost reach 80% by the, by the end, of, uh, end of the year. Okay, thank you so much, Raj. Uh, and I, I know that you have been keeping in touch with, uh, with your travel agencies and it's good to hear that feedback from you that not only you are keeping in touch, but you are developing initiatives to also take care of those that are in need and that they can count on you and on Travelport to assist them um, in, in this particular scenario in which they need the most. And, uh, and especially touching this point of travel port assisting sub, uh, the agencies, uh, I, I would like to ask you, Loretta, welcome to the stage. And uh, how has travel port been supporting your agencies during the past few months? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you uh, to introduce me to this uh, session and uh, following Raj is going to be hard to, to follow, but <laughs> I don't no, think I'm going to have a great relationship, you know, so happy with my husband around all the time. We fight all the time. So I don't know how you're doing it with your wife, Raj, but <laughs> good for you. I think it's fantastic what you did, Joa, um, what you're getting us together. I'm very happy to see that um, we have actually Raj is one of our strongest and you know dedicated operators we have a travel port and this is what we made of we're made of uh, teams that are family oriented we have our operator on the line i see my team in lebanon as well who are uh, a large team in lebanon as well that do serve our customers to the, to the t and that they use your products extremely well i'm very happy to see them on the line and, uh, and i see some of the the agents that we support as well. So to add on to what Raj and Diana was saying, it's absolutely necessary 
uh, that we do communication with our customers. And at Travelport, I am very lucky to be a part of this family. Um, and I've been, as you said, many years in the travel industry, and I think nobody has ever been through what we're doing right now. And it's really extremely difficult. But as a travel port employee, let me get back to business. Um, I have not had a vacation. We've been working nonstop to ensure that our operators are working digitally to ensure that our customers have uh, been focused, letting our partners and our customers know that the most important thing is communication. Even from our CEO down to our CL, SLT members to, to, to all of us, we have been communicating with our customers on a daily basis. And that's through our operators or through our direct customer connections that we have. And it's a great communication that we've been doing. Uh, for me personally, I cannot go out without a day with contacting some of our customers. And I would love to contact them all the time, but as you know, we're going through rough times in all of this region. The Vermont region has been very difficult and whole, the whole world has been very difficult through these times. So we are making sure that Travelport um, from the top to, to all of us are communicating to our customers. Now, how we're doing this is, is important for you guys to know. First of all, as Raj did mention, there's a lot of ways we've been doing it. Uh, we have launched uh, our website, we have had our websites, it's a new and approved one, and it has been ready to go in the wings a long time ago. And we decided to launch this despite all the challenging times, and because it allows our customers to get to the information they need quickly and easily. Now, about two and a half months ago, uh, we, have, we became the first technology company to launch a COVID-19 uh, resource hub, which Raj was talking about which is directly connected to our new website. And that's www.travelport slash COVID-19. Now, as I see my members of the Lebanese team, and uh, I think I have the Turkish team, they have done a wonderful job into ensuring this hub um, has been sent to all our customers. Now, the hub is a very useful, has a lot of very valuable information. For example, it has all the hotel and tower policy trackers, uh, it, was a, it has a direct link to its support of services and guides us in the best ways to use the technology during these crises. So you don't have to jump. There's so much communication out there, so much information out there. We don't have to go from one uh, link to another link to understand what airlines are doing. Now, it's really difficult to follow with that. So that hub and that Microsoft gave a lot of information to our people, and a lot of people are confused. So this helped a lot of our travel agents and our customers. And, and I see that Hiba's on the line that she can explain to that further and our team on the line 11 and that tells you how much, how important that hub was. We have over 60,000 people that have connected to that hub, Joa. So it was very important for us to get and to communicate to our, to our customers. We have a lot of other things that we're doing. Uh, we hold virtual meetings with our partners where we discuss individual needs and channel challenges. So many of those meetings address the, the issues that we're facing on the ground with our customers. So those meetings are one-to-one. -one. We understand, you know, we try to understand what their pros and minuses are during this COVID-19 issue. And we do definitely, number one, not just talk about work. We talk about how the family is, how their safety is, how their staff are. So it's very important that these, uh, these virtual meetings with our partners are done. We also have consultancy sessions, what we do all the time through Travelport. It's where our solution consultants analyze a partner's workflow and review their end-to-end -end booking process virtually. Then our team then provides recommendations how the partner can sharpen its operations and come out of this crisis stronger and fitter. And trust me, Travelport is doing the utmost best to ensure that we're doing that. And finally, uh, again, as I said, communication is very important and we're receiving, uh, we give all, all our customers all the uh, relevant data and, and the capabilities in place to understand that data. So we're having a lot of internal communications with our customers and ensure as much as possible is giving to them on a regular basis. Again and again and again, as, as Diana said and Raj said, communication is number one. We at Travelport are, <laughs> have been doing this for many years and right now we've been upping our game to do even more. So uh, that's our number one way of you know, ensuring that uh, our customers are retained and understand how we're gonna go forward. It's true. Uh, thank you so much, Loretta. It's true that nowadays communication is key. And uh, I have also been in touch in the past months with our customers and also with all local teams of travel board around the world. And I can see that everyone is putting in an effort to stand along with the customers and letting them know that we are here to help in any way we can. 
and uh, and even if there is not need of assistance at least a small talk is always good for us when we are all in lockdown for so many time it's always good to speak with someone especially people that we have known for so long and that we are very fond of thank you so much loretta so we have a fourth speaker that i have not presented so we have the daughter of Mr. Wally Temsa. She is Dana Temsa, and she will take the place of Wally. Thank you so much for attending in such short notice, Dana. Welcome to the speaker panel. Thank you, John. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Dana Temsa. Uh, I'll be attending on behalf of my father. My father. Uh, he woke up sick this morning, unfortunately, and he apologizes to everyone. Um, so thank you I so much <laughs> thank you so for i would that. like to to ask you a question so travel agents are used to work from home nowadays and the tech solutions like travel port mobile agent and dts web agent which were featured in the coronavirus hub that travel port has set up um, so the travel agents are used to work from home with those solutions. Do you have plans of keeping your staff with the liberty of working from home after the crisis, even if only on a partially level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we are very fortunate that we could have worked, I mean, we had the chance to work from home still and we could attend to our clients' needs. I mean, the importance of technology nowadays in the travel field is, is growing uh, every day. The WFH says tech solutions have facilitated the option for our staff to help, to, to help our customers around the world and around the hour. Um, but we still, I mean, um, we still offer the liberty for our um, employees to work from home. It's, it's very helpful and it's very useful. Um, but we still, um, our culture still, I mean, the people still uh, feel that face-to-face -face interaction is really important as well. Uh, so yeah, that's my opinion on this, uh, this matter. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Dana. But nonetheless, it's good to hear that you have plans to, to give the liberty to your travel agents to at least do some work from home and that you have the technology that allows you to do that without any hassle. Uh, so that's good. Um, Diana, I would yeah. like to, to ask you, so we have seen in the past that travel agency directors like yourself love new technologies, but faced some resistance from their travel agents to adopt those technologies. Because in some cases, those technologies even change the way that people work. So I would like to ask you if you feel that your team is more open to new procedures, new technologies to support and enhance their daily tasks. First of all, as you mentioned in your question that most of the directors and management love the technologies. Yes, for sure we love the technologies. Any other human to see something, you know, a different way of doing, but we have to admit, technology is a very costly tool for most of the travel agents. Because technology is not only something they give you to your first time you see, it's a constant uh, investment, uh, constant investment in the maintenance, a training, because technology meant not to stop at the moment. Technology meant to develop and it will continue to develop. So technology, it's a very, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a many different tools, okay? So we, uh, in our travel management company, uh, uh, differentiate the technology, which are actually very important, and technology, which is uh, just a supportive tool. Uh, so that's how we approach the technology. The team and the staff, when they have been recruited, uh, we have um, take a certain survey to understand in advance how they are in terms of the uh, how they are handy with the technology, you know, I mean, how they are involved in the, uh, themselves in the social channels, in the, in the social media, which uh, applications uh, they use. So when we uh, take the team, like member of the team, a new person, 
we already have an idea how this person will react when we implement the new technology and how fast they will be into the uh, you know, training and into the use of that technology. So coming back to the technology as overall, I have a strong belief that in travel industry, no technology can actually compare with a human touch. And no technology will be able to sort it out the individual needs. And especially these difficult times, we can see this. So that suddenly everybody realized that technology could become actually a very, um, how can I call it, frustrated tool. Because a lot of people, which we have been forced to sort it out issues of the people who purchase the tickets through the online who has done something through the technology and they got stuck in that problem because they required one human being to really understand their needs to really understand their trouble and to assist them so the technology it is for us more uh, uh, like an informative tool and the tool which will help my team quickly to sort out that task so for example one of the technology which you kind of provide to us help them to get the, you know, that uh, booking or to get that information instant with a one click of their, you know, of their, on their phone. So that technology, we are really uh, welcome in our business, that technology which helps them to give quick answer, uh, to be able to find uh, some information, uh, for example, information these days essential on restrictions, right? Everywhere are restrictions. So the technology will give us a quick answer about certain restrictions, uh, the airline restrictions, uh, the government restrictions. It's very important. So to have an identification uh, instant, it is very important. And again and again, the communication tool, it's a very important. So if I bring everything in this one device, which a person has, today we carry 24 hours with us everywhere next to our bed, when we go uh, into the you know, private places, that uh, tool, that particular device as mobile is always with us. So we are, uh, we are uh, investing in that technology which can, have, uh, you know, uh, which can help my team to, uh, to solve the issues of the client. But we are not really investing in the technology which I tell to my client, go and do everything yourself. Then I basically kill my own uh, you know, uh, business. If I give every tool to the client to go and do everything themselves, why the client does need me? So the essential need of having the travel agency to just uh, slowly and gradually disappear. So that's why when I talk to the travel uh, agencies, I tell them, you are basically, if you're going to give this as a, as a main tool, you just basically killing our own industry because they will not be needed. We need to find a very, um, uh, holistic um, combination between interaction of the human and the technology. So the companies who has developed in-house, uh, you know, softwares of um, that combination when the human can interact the process when it is most important moment and very essential, that artificial intelligence will give an notification. So now this is a simple process which can be handled by the uh, technology, but in this point, we need to, in, uh, the, the my staff or the team of operations to have to be involved in the process to make the client happy, to, uh, to make the client decide that yes, I will, uh, I want to finalize my transaction through them. I, I feel because there will be someone to help me in case it will not happen, in case something will be cancelled. So especially in this very unpredictable and difficult times. So uh, overall to summarize for your question, Yes, technology is important. Yes, it will continue to develop. Yes, we are going to see uh, more involvement of the artificial intelligence in the processes. We will not see as the users will not see, but on the uh, backup of the process, it will be all artificial intelligence. Uh, but I, again, strongly believe without human, without us, this technology will not exist. The people is essential need of the travel industry today I and I think for many more years to come. I completely agree with you, Diana. It's true that um, 
that technology is very important for travel agencies, but it does not uh, remove the personal touch. And we can see that uh, when there are crisis moments like the one that we are living today, like the ash cloud from Iceland uh, some years ago, we can see that the customers that had the best treatment were the ones that made bookings through travel agencies and that had someone to support them. And the ones that made bookings through large OTAs uh, directly with airlines, they were stranded in waiting lines on the phone uh, for hours and even without being able to reach the operator. So I completely agree when you say that, um, that technology is good as a method of giving more productivity to travel agents, but not replacing them. That shouldn't be the case. Uh, the case should be to give to travel agencies technology that allows them to be more productive and give uh, more options, more information, more alternatives to the customer, add value to the customer. At the end of the day, add value without added effort for the travel agent. That should be the point. Thank you so much, Diana. Um, so, Loretta, we can see that travel agencies are reopening, travel agents are slowly going back to the workplace, and airspace is starting to reopen. Um, which tourism segment do you think that will recover soon, leisure or corporate? Uh, that's a really good question. And um, uh, it's, it's, a, it's actually a debate, but we think that leisure is actually the strongest contender. Uh, corporations are facing a financial crisis are likely to cut their appetite for travel uh, that's not business critical. So it's not business critical to travel because everybody's working from home. And with many people working from home uh, effectively, business travel is an avoidable expense, only for the short term, in our opinion. Uh, organizations are generally risk uh, averse and they're likely to go towards the side of caution um, when it comes to employee safety and duty of care. So leisure travel, on the other hand, is has different drivers. So uh, they you know, the demand for people want to go see their family and friends. And I think it's dictated by, it's not dictated by, you know, a corporate has their own policies, so are no restrained by budget. So you have no control over uh, leisure. So it's what, you know, when the leisure travel, travel, they want to go. And domestically, as you see, as I see in my region and in China, uh, Turkey has opened domestic, China has opened domestic. We have seen an influx of hotel reservations in China. 50% of increase has been done in the hotel business in China. So I'm sure the leisure travel on the domestic travel is going to be much more uh, up. Uh, again, uh, staying home in their own country, they feel safe. Lebanon, for example, people are traveling inside of their own country. They're finding more ways of traveling through and going through hiking, for example, in Turkey. They have so many other regions that they, Turkey is a huge country and they fly domestically to go to their hometowns during the winter times, summer times. So that's why we feel that leisure is gonna be much more uh, up uh, and running than corporate. That's again on short term, uh, but make no mistakes. We still feel confident. We do still feel, uh, definitely feel contract that's that touch of you know, meeting their customers, meeting our customers will recover eventually. Could be in the next quarter, we don't know yet. Again, this face-to-face -face meeting is very important for us. Either way, um, you know, we feel at Travelport that the relationship build is built on relationships and that it is driven by human contacts. So either way, Travelport, we're always ready to deliver a strong industry recovery in the future and we're here to ensure that that happens. So again, our take on this is leisure travel will become first. Thank you so much, Loretta. It seems to be the general consensus. Uh, I digest a lot of information on a daily basis and it seems that it's the general consensus that uh, leisure will recover first. And, yes. um, and, and it's pretty natural due to the, to the reasons that you, that you said. Um, it's natural that it happens like that. Yeah, it is. And again, again, as I mentioned, we're looking at the hotel bookings, uh, uh, you know, areas yeah. not happening, but the hotel industry is picking up a bit on the domestic side. It's, so let's hope that continues. Yeah. So, um, Raj, my friend, 
We have seen in previous crises and also in the COVID-19 that uh, travelers that had the best customer service were the ones that booked through travel agencies, which uh, Diana already mentioned. So I would like to ask you if you foresee a distribution more focused on the GDS and not so fragmented as we've seen in the previous Yes, yes, yes. I'm very happy you asked this question because, you know, GDS is our lifeblood and it's the lifeblood of the travel agencies. Okay, uh, so uh, I have seen a diversion from, from a GDS uh, a distribution to a web distribution, which has uh, been, uh, uh, you know, which has been uh, a concern for us for some time, even though <clears throat> travel port upgraded its products and services and integrated into the web services and started assisting agents on an online travel agency portal. But I still believe that for a travel agency where it is a personalized service and where you are either uh, serving a B2B customer or a B2C customer, okay, or a, a leisure customer, you know, travel agencies they have a, a, a single point of uh, um, uh, access on content with the GDS. And this has, through my years of experience, I have seen that it has not been so well replaced by any port. So uh, I, I would like to come back and uh, you know, elaborate on this point, uh, basically because today when I talk to the travel agents uh, and say, what, what is happening now? How are we going about with your... Uh, if your business is this is we are just waiting for the market to open so that we can start using the the Galileo system again this, this is this is what I like to hear from them well and I, uh, thanks to uh, and I would always uh, include uh, uh, TTS uh, in as one of my partners because there are many customers here who, who are using TTS and they are accessible from all over okay and that's a mirror image of uh, of the Galileo system at a fingerprint, a finger touch. So th there, everybody is waiting and itching to use it. I mean, if you have to go on a or on a on a web and look for a reservation or to to reach where you want it, it's very time consuming. And the and in a country like Kuwait, where the experts are working on on the Galileo system for the last 20 years, for them to migrate from this and put their hands onto something else takes. A lot of time, and then I, I, I would say uh, the future is still more uh, robust on the GDS. GDS has evolved. Trialport has done a wonderful job, and uh, it, today it's it's the leading GDS in the world. And with this quality of of uh, the content provider and the easy access to work on the system, I would say that uh, most of the customers and the users. You know, with a little bit of loyalty, they would not be able to shift. And most importantly, they will find more content and access in, through the GDS. I, I hope I answered this question. And I, I just wanted to go back to Diana's uh, discussion. I, I see a huge opportunity there uh, as a customer, okay, because she has not been approached by either or, or uh, any technology provider in a way that she wants technology to be seen. Okay, and I, I can see that uh, travel port still has a potential, which I have seen. I have seen EasyJet uh, be using uh, travel port to, to modify their content. You know, it's, it's, it is, it's unbelievable how EasyJet has done that to go to the, to the extent of giving the service to a point which they require a customer to access. So if travel port can do that, I'm sure it can answer what uh, Diana is looking for as an example, I'm saying. But so that, that is a huge opportunity. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And, um, and it's absolutely true that uh, Travelport has done a tremendous job throughout the years evolving. And especially with the partners like TTS that assist in complementing the product offering that Travelport has. 
and uh, it has given a lot of ways for travel agencies to improve their ways of working, to improve their productivity, and even to, to increase business generating new revenue streams. Uh, so that, that's very important that travel agencies feel that uh, actually the GDS is not just a piece of technology, it's a partner that walks hand in hand with them. Yes. And, and we also think like that at TTS. And, um, and having that in mind, uh, I have the next question for Dana. Um, we strongly believe that the new normal post-COVID-19 will rely heavily on technology and we are also seeing an increased um, interest from travel agencies that are willing to try out new technology and uh, like solutions like TTS Corporate or TTS Consolidator. So I would like to ask you which technology has been implemented or is planned to be implemented to face the new normal? Okay, so um, as you said, the new norm will be um, geared towards uh, technology as the young generation have vast needs and are very tech friendly as well. Um, and so as a travel agency, uh, we plan to implement um, TTS, corporate and TTS consolidator, uh, hopefully in the future. Um, as we want to cater for agencies that also are not familiar with updates and technology aspects of our domain. Great, uh, thank you, Dana. And I have personally been in Dubai last year with uh, Walid and we spoke about that and uh, it's on the plans to implement TTS Consolidator to give to the sub-agencies the freedom and the autonomy that they need without having uh, talators to issue the tickets always for them and to give them autonomy to do that. So those are good plans that we have together and surely it will increase the business for talators. So Loretta, uh, what will Travelport be doing to support the industry recovery given these trends that we have been speaking for quite a while now? You know, that's another great question. And I'm adding to Raj's and Diana's because we're so passionate at Travelport. We do so, you know, our things with so much passion for our customers. Um, before the crisis began, uh, we worked on our next generation platform, which, uh, you know, as Raj said, Galileo is a great platform. Despite the crisis, we remain on track with the development. Uh, you know, I can say a few points. I can't say that much. Uh, the APIs to, our, to access our system show amazing improvements uh, in their shop to book. And the end-to-end -end servicing uh, of the NDC will continue to show meaningful growth in the content. And our enhanced uh, refund and exchange tools um, in the new platform are really a big step forward for us. So, you know, I wish I could talk more about, stay tuned on this and we're gonna have a lot more to say soon. And I am, you know, I, you know, again, passionate is the word at Travelport. We're so excited about this. Um, um, the team is so excited about this. Everybody at Travelport is so excited about, about this. We did say uh, we had our, some of our top customers that we have been able to share some few details about this. And again, the, they're very super excited about it. And uh, you're going to hear a lot more soon. I can't say more, and I wish I could. But as I said, the, you know, I'm really convinced that the uh, border part marketplace is going to see uh, a lot more conversation about this changer. This is going to be a, definitely a conversation changer for the industry. And um, you know, you will be hearing soon some more information about that. Great. Thank you so much, Loretta. We sure. we are expecting to hear more from Travel Park, of course. Will do. So, Diana, the next question is to you, and we already touched a little bit on this point. So, the question is, do the travel agents that survive this have a resurgence? Because people have realized the value of having a human to deal with all the uncertainties of travel, especially nowadays, uh, which country is open, which country is closed, which country has quarantine or not. Um, so, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, to add to touch uh, two of these points, I first of all want all the travel agents and travel professionals who has been there 
passion for many years serving the people to have a great faith that we are a really important element of this industry because the travel professionals as i'm speaking on behalf of travel agents we are obtaining the knowledge of many different elements we somehow experts in gds we somehow experts in leisure experts in air experts in the ground so we obtain a lot of knowledge and experience from all different parts of the travel industry and the most important element it is how to transfer that knowledge into the helpful tool that the people will approach you and you create a strong relationship with your clients being b2b or b2c clients that they really understand how much they are in need in that professional expertise in that professional advice so relationship that essential part when i talk about the communication uh, yes we communicate but to create relationship out of that communication that the most important and essential element of communication because a lot of people they communicate and that's it you know, like what we are today we communicate but i want to create relationship with raj i want to create relationship with loretta i will find the grounds and the subjects and the basic of how to keep them with me for the longer if i consider the essential part of my business not only personal life maybe you know we'll find some uh, points uh, to join some you know to have a commonality in hobbies in activities whatever but in the business life so that's why we train our team and i really want to uh, share this my humble uh, opinion for the all the travel agents who still continue to maintain kind of uh, old school as what i consider an old school which is a relationship is most essential i want them to create that relationship and this difficult time this is the best time for us to create that relationship why people are not busy they are not any more busy with day to day activities we can't go to the mall to the shops to see that we are not disturbed we can truly essentially communicate with each other and to find out a lot of people i became to know the hobbies of my staff and most of them worked with me for 13 years i didn't know what is actually they are they are only open up through this difficult time that we could have a, a dance classes we could invite some of our clients who are sharing the same passion to join us and then we create a relationship so that person with that client who has a question uh, uh, how do i go to my uh, home how do i reunite with my family he will not go any more searching google you know what i mean they will call and pick up and ask diana what do you think should i do this can i do that and that's an essential because they will stay for me no matter where they are tomorrow they are today and why you know the buys a, a big megapolis we have 90% of the population are expats but i know that that person who find in me a very a genuine sincere professional advisor in travel if they're tomorrow in canada or in portugal or lebanon or in kuwait they will chat with me they will send and they will search for my opinion and that's where i can make my business happen because if i given to them a right advice and the proper product they will say yes i want it they will not going to any more to search and the essential of having save some money it's not any more the subject because we say that how technology will be against of the traditional travel agency or travel management company because the money is the most important thing time and the money but in this period of time the true value of travel agent has been seen that we have a time now and the money is no one a value a safety it's a value a right guidance it's a value so that's where we consider we create a many more relationship we could actually bring a many more new clients who find us with a little bit many little bit more lucky maybe than kuwait and many other places we had chance to go back to office since the end of the april because no matter how Uh, that uh, home environment can be uh, you know uh, how can i call comfortable for us i still believe that the environment in business has created in people the discipline how they act and still i consider the office environment is important part of productivity because we have seen this you know in my own experience with people in office i have a 50% of my staff in office and we have got much more calls much more um uh, engagement through the uh communication tools which we have even we have a visitors in our office more 
than I considered we had it before, which is, was a, a very su surprising phenomenon. Because the people now, when they have got a chance to not go and do many other activities, they want to come, keeping the social distance, and to communicate with someone face to face. This has become a very so essential need. So for all the travel agents who are today here, I really uh, uh, want to share my humble opinion and summarize. Yes, it is very important to have a technology. Without travel port, which is my main technology, I have to, uh, you know, to, to, to share this, and uh, I, I love it. Without ETS, my team will not be able to give a right and quick answer. It is a very important element of my success, no doubt. But I train also my staff to understand, first of all, we are a human. We have to understand essential needs of the same human. And this is important. Give a quick answer, give a professional answer, but treat them as you really understand their needs. And when these two things combine together, we can see in this difficult time, we still maintain the sales, we still maintain some business, we still do some transactions, which is, you know, I continue will, uh, will keep us alive. And we can see day to day is getting better. So all my travel agents, colleagues, please have a faith. Faith in yourself, in your staff, uh, keep a great relationship with the travel technology providers. They will help you to, you know, to get it more easier, more quicker, but train your team not to do anything just because it has to be done. Do it with a personal touch. People will appreciate it and they will be back to you and they will keep your uh, relationship with you and they will keep to be your client for the longer time. Thank you so much, Diana. And I would just like to add a little bit on that, that uh, I feel that it's like going back to the roots of the travel agent where yes. knowledge was not available, Google was not around, and when people needed to know something, they called to their travel agent. He was the knowledge uh, person about that. And uh, of course, as times change, people felt that they did not need the travel agent. They can Google everything. They can do everything on their own. But then when crisis knock on their doors, uh, they are left stranded without anyone to help, without anyone to guide them, as you were saying. And, and that's, I believe, that is the future for travel agencies to give a personal touch, to give a personal assistance. Usually people that work in our trade, they are passionate about working in our trade. And that's why people usually don't leave the trade and make a career throughout the years. And if you are passionate in doing that, so create that personal passion. Pass that passion to the customer that is in front of you and he feels that you are truly connecting and you are not just delivering a ticket to the customer. And, uh, and I completely agree with you that the value with the added plus of nowadays having technology that can boost your productivity and can add value to your customers. So yeah, I completely agree with you on that. If I may add something, uh, which is, uh, you know, we regain a lot of clients which we lost them some time ago because they completely moved into the themselves uh, bookings and online. We could regain them back because we never lost connection with them. We know that most of the transactions, they will go online through the uh, airline websites or different tools. Again, basically, it is always financial reason why I do it. But now they are ready to pay the premium, that royalty to the travel agents because they need that service. I train my team to communicate with uh, our, uh, you know, that clients, which is for some time, you know, we know we are losing several of transactions because they're doing themselves to tell them a very simple, uh, small story. It's like a commonality between the health industry and the travel industry. Today you have a, uh, symptoms and during this time I could see how many of my friends going through the Google and searching by saying this symptom and that symptom and Google will give them, yeah, I'll take that medicine and a million, million of advisors. But can you tell me, any one of you will go to risk their own health to follow that uh, Google advice and the uh, virtual doctor advice to implement in yourself to take that medicine to take that to risk your own health to your own life no we're going to seek the right advice through the doctors 
in the hospitals, in the clinics, who we trust. We go to them and we really uh, uh, more consciously relax that we believe that that people, that doctors which we see face to face will give me right advice because I trust it. Than to go to search any uh, you know, answer to the Google, which is available. So the same with travel professionals. We have to understand, we are the same. We are doctors of travel industry. We should give them the feeling that we are the one who can sort it out the issue, being a good time and bad time. Today, the doctors have changed to be not the one who serve you when you're sick. A lot of doctors now serve you so you don't become sick and they are requalified themselves to the preventive uh, health care. So to treat you before you get fall sick. So this is a, um, uh, I think this is the mindset the travel agents has to implement in their process. We are there as a doctors to give a right advice, despite the hundreds of machines online can give you, but you still need someone to, to feel comfortable to say yes. This is how it will work the best for you. It's, so that's yeah. how we talk to our clients. Majority of the clients we could regain through that small things and they realize, yes, I don't lose anything by going and getting an advice. I, I, I will not pay anything. We, we are in this part of the world, don't charge anyone for the advice services like the, the Americans, for example, do. You know what I mean? You cannot get any advice unless you pay in front money. Here you can have a privilege to get any professional advice without any money involved. So get and come and, and involve yourself, try to seek advice on travel agents. You don't lose anything. You don't need to pay any money for it. So that's how we tell to our uh, you know, potential clients. And it works. And it works. Yeah, it's true. And uh, travel agents are very knowledgeable. And I believe that people will value that more in the future. And, uh, and as you said, it's a, it's a work that travel agents need to do to, to place themselves as industry knowledgeable and uh, give a call to the customers knowing that they are there to assist them. Um, and all of that is very important to, to regain those customers that uh, were lost to the online business some years ago. Thank you so much, Diana. Um, so, uh, Raj, from a technology standpoint, we have seen a huge increase of the use of technology, especially the ones that provide mobility and working from home. And I would like to ask you, because you have deployed several Travelport mobile agent licenses in your market, and uh, how did this kind of technology make your subscribers life easier during that transition from working from office to work from home? And also, if you have heard some plans from your subscribers to keep their travel agents working from home or from anywhere with Travelport Mobile Agent. Yes, I like this new terminology, WFH, yeah. <laughs> yes. working from home. Okay, working from home. And I, w I wanted to go back and uh, touch on uh, one of the uh, beautiful uh, thoughts which uh, Diana gave to me, you know, uh, uh, be, uh, coming from the old school. Even though she is not old, she has got the old school concept, which is wonderful. You know, this is, I mean, I'm really old, old school. Okay, but uh, when, I, uh, when I hear from, uh, from a beautiful lady like that saying that the old school concept is wonderful and I working from home is nothing new. It was there before. It was there before. It has started from working from home. People used to do it from home, but like uh, Diana mentioned, they used to use the telephone, call, write it down, put the uh, thoughts in a paper, put the requirements in a paper, and they started working from home. Then the travel agency evolved. So I think we have to look, take a step back and see where we are today. You know, working from the office, you are still using the same Galileo system. You are, you are accessing the same content. So working from home, uh, de de defining a pattern to work from home, you know, divide yourselves from, uh, from a professional work and a homework. Okay, homework, you wash your dishes, that's another thing. But uh, when you when you work, you work uh, with a uh, with a specific timing. And how tra Travelport mobile application uh, 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 helps these uh, users is amazing, because today with the lockdown they can't go anywhere. They they are they are using their uh, 
uh, mobiles even in the in the kitchen, and they can still make a reservation. Okay, they can still use uh, the system. So I'm I'm putting it in a plain terms uh, how these things help. And uh, when we uh, look at going forward, I don't think the markets are going to open. Taking for instance Kuwait for the next six months, we we have a uh, we have phase one, two, three. Okay, and all the employees cannot go to the office. So, and it's the same with the travel agencies. They uh, only 30% of them can come to the office for the first three months. Then the, the second phase, first three months is June, July, July, August, September. So the second phase is 60% uh, that uh, October, November, December. So you still can have only 60% of the employees in the office till the end of the year. So how do you manage? They have to be at home, working from home, and whatever you do, they have to discipline themselves. Use the system and the, uh, the access of content. Uh, and I, I, I would like to mention here the rich content and branding of uh, travel port uh, uh, airline systems. These are all easily accessible, whether you are at home or office. You can help your uh, travel agent or you can help your customer uh by the by 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 the ease of uh, you know of all these applications so i'm sure the future for a long time is going to be working from your own space uh, uh which is cost effective uh, you will find less and less people in the travel agencies sitting and working and i'm sure even uh, in the the, in the companies like uh, what diana works she must be also planning things like this to keep uh, uh, more people uh, for, to work from home and less people in the office. Because see, you have to cut your costs, you have to reduce your uh, expenses. And then when the technology is helping you to, uh, to reduce and uh, make it cost, very cost effective, why not use it? So I'm sure uh, TMA, Travel Port, uh, uh, um, uh, OTAs, and I would come back to uh, mention uh, web terminals, which uh, again, uh, TTS is uh, providing. These are all the tools which can easily be deployed and can be used. And I'm sure uh, th th this is going to be the future. You know, really? travel, I, I've just heard that one of the big travel agents has uh, reduced almost 30% of the employees. That means closing almost uh, five or six locations. So that, that, many, that many people will work from home. So they don't have to pay rents. They don't have to pay for the infrastructure. And this is the way forward for, a, for quite some time. And then once they get used to it, they're not going to have uh, uh, more people and less uh, uh, technology. It will automatically change. They will have more people with high tech knowledge, with knowledge of content, and they and it's going to be very competitive for you, for people to enter the travel industry now because they have to have full knowledge like what diana has mentioned then at the same time they have to have a knowledge to use the system and at the same time they should be able to mix both you know the intelligence the artificial intelligence of the system which is already there in our new platform of uh, uh, of the galileo uh, smartpoint 9.0 you already have the artificial intelligence there. Use the human intelligence, interface it. I'm sure you'll get the best product. It's true, it's true, yeah. my friend. I completely agree with you. And, and the, the best thing of these kind of technologies that we provide is that you don't need to install anything. Uh, like TTS Web Agent, you access on your laptop or on your smart TV, webagentapp.tts.com and you're in. And you log in with your regular GDS credentials, sign on in PCC, and you're good to go and working from home without having to install anything at all. So that, that's, uh, the future is now, and it's already happening, and that's very good. Uh, thank you so much, Raj. Um, so uh, the last question that I have for today is for Dana. And uh, I would like to ask which kind of tourism will recover soon, national or are, do you think that people are eager to go abroad and will make vacations in destinations that have less restrictive control measures? 
Yes, so in my humble opinion, I think national travel cover more than international because um, people will face less health restrictions and it's more cost friendly uh, because you know how COVID has affected the economy um, in general. And uh, the majority of the um, traffic will be as well um, family movements and family reunions. Um, I believe this, uh, there will be an increase uh, in that as well. Um, and yes, uh, that's basically it. Okay, thank you so much, Dana. Um, so I will skip one extra question that I had for the panel because uh, as you have probably have noticed, we are already over time. We had one hour for this panel, but as the discussion is so fruitful and everyone has such a beautiful insight to share your knowledge with all the attendees, that's where time runs smooth and, uh, and it flows like water. Uh, so I would like to ask uh, Ines if we have some questions for the Q&A session. Uh, yes, John, we have some questions here. Uh, I will start with Dana. Uh, I have a question here from Mike that says, what is your operational team focusing on right now? Okay, so basically um, with the um, airport in Beirut being closed at the moment, uh, we are basically focusing on con still having this connection with our clients, uh, maintaining uh, good relations, um, uh, you know, um, if, there, if any client has any changes they would like to make to their future travel, we are doing that at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I will try to answer as many questions as I can. Um, um, I have one here from Joanna for Diana that says, what and how are you, communication, are you communicating to your non-currently buying customers? Okay, so the, the, that is where is the technology plays a major role because you should have a certain system which allows you to understand what is, uh, what is that clientele you have and to be able to split that clientele to do the common sense actions. You don't offer for the person who has a need to go to India back something to send them back to US. So you have to have a very uh, sophisticated uh, database management if you don't have a CRM as a tool. You might have the, uh, someone in office who has a knowledge of how to manage your database of your clients. That's number one. Number two, you have to have the um, pattern and content. What for you communicating? Because without it, create the idea why you're communicating, uh, better don't to communicate. So that communication has to have a common sense what you want to say to your clients. Why, uh, what is the message you want to send? I was uh, watching uh, the, um, what are the biggest players in the market who has been granted as airlines messages which have been sent to the, to the public. The message has been, uh, we will back again, uh, we will meet soon. So all the positive messages to give the people an understanding. Then you have to have a tool, how you communicate. When you create the content, what you want to say to your different group of the clients, uh, the tool. So the tool will become, because your clients in our business, we are a travel management company. So we have a segregation between the uh, government clients, a corporate international company, Clients, they have individuals have value. We, we are based in UAE, we have a royal family, families, and so on. You know, anyone on that niche. So, for each of this group, you have to have a different communication tool because it will not serve the purpose if you don't create a different communication tool. So, the tool to communicate with the government, they have their own channels where you will be able to have a webinar to post your product to tell you what is happening. You should be the part of the, their own internal. Uh, conferences online, that's one tool. Second tool, when you communicate with corporate travel agencies, uh, corporate travel co uh, companies, then it is have a different tool. You create with them already certain charts, you have a groups, you have the uh, special for the higher management, and then the end users, which you can use as social channels, if you create a very strong social channels. And if it is a royal families or higher end in, uh, clientele, you will communicate one to one when it is with a personal call or the personal message. So everything what you do in the end of the day has to have a personalization. You can't do a general message, just general. Then you will expect the general effect. So if you want a very precise uh, result, 
So it means your message and communication has to be also have a common sense and precise message what you want to deliver. So that's how we do it. Okay, thank you, Diana. Uh, I have another question here for Loretta. Uh, which trends do you foresee for the future of travel agencies post COVID-19? Uh, that's a really good question because uh, again, we're at Travelport. Um, we see that the travel industry will continue to experience and it will be a really a rapid change. I mean, we see as, as exactly what Raj and uh, Diana was saying, the, there's going to be a lot of changes. But, you know, we need the technology, we need GDSs, we need uh, what Raj was stating that Travelport is such a strong company and uh, we're, we're moving, uh, as I said, there's going to be this transformation will be built on three foundational priorities for the industry. So that will be multi-source content, uh, retail excellence, and maximizing the value of every trip. This is the most important thing. And this is what, uh, you know, Diana was talking about. You know, it is old school, but we have to move forward and ensure that our customers are satisfied and retained and actually, you know, winning new customers. So. This will be an enabled through our next generation platform that I mentioned earlier. So uh, we have multi-source content, which is all about ensuring and, and, and ingesting, normalizing and delivering access to a wide variety of content types, whatever that source would be. Uh, retailing excellence is enabled through our next generation tools, creating an environment of easy up and cross sell and flexible and customizable, customizable displays as Raj was saying on our smart point. And by, this is what we're doing is maximizing uh, the value of every trip so that travel sellers will grow revenue or do reduce the cost to serve in every point across that trip. So we're looking at reducing cost and having the maximized value of that trip. So what we're doing at Travelport is really important, as I just said. Um, we're focused on making and buying and selling uh, travel smoother. And, and again, which was very, very, very important, much more user friendly. So uh, what Diana was saying that we need our customers to be, to be felt that, you know, what, the, what we're doing and providing content and providing our platform is something that is, is seamlessly done. Nothing is difficult. So by keeping retail and content coupled with the value of the heart of everything we do, this is what we do at Travelport. We believe that we're gonna de deliver a platform that creates more value. Uh, so in the long run, you know, we wanna make sure that uh, we drive re revenue for supply and demand, as well as value for our travelers through recovery and beyond. So whatever happens in the future, we're here to stay. So Travelport is there, our next generation platform is there, is coming, and we want to ensure that we serve all our customers to the utmost uh, satisfaction that they have. So again, post, uh, post uh, COVID is very important. We're working very hard on this next generation platform. We're working to ensure that, as I stated, uh, that the, the experience of our customers is, is, is very important. The commitment to our customers is very important. And we wanna take that to another level, a much higher level as well. Okay, thank you, Loretta. Sure. Uh, I have just one last question from the Q&A to Raj from Hamad. Will this phase also accelerate the consumer move to online travel, digital commerce in countries and geographies, geographies that were sceptical? Uh, yes, this is a very, very, uh, you know, uh, relevant question. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, go back to the history of OTA in a short, uh, short term, you know. Uh, OTA, if you take a country like Kuwait, OTA was, uh, was introduced five years back. Now today, 15% of the bookings are coming through the online travel agencies. Well, there, it all depends on how the content is provided, how they service the customer online, how is the, uh, the, the processes done, uh, whether it's, uh, it's a refund, reissues, what are the charges, the transparency. This is very, very relevant for any OTA to succeed. Customer will move to OTAs provided they get the confidence that every booking that they make is, has its, its privileges, its values, and at the same time, uh, 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 you know, they can uh, exit from that booking uh, with ease. So this is very, very important, okay? And in Travelport, we have a universal API, which, uh, which, is, a, which is a multi uh, uh, content provider. It doesn't have to be always through uh, the, 
the Galileo travel port uh, pipeline, I, it, there are external content also provided. But uh, the, to answer the questions, yes, the consumers will move to OTA uh, uh, for sure. And that, that content will continue to be uh, existing, provided the, the, the suppliers have uh, a keen uh, responsibility to make sure the customer is satisfied. This is very, very important. I have seen in our market, the, the, the services of the OTA has been so good that uh, there has been a shift to the OTA, but then we, we uh, travel port was getting the value because at the end of the day, the bookings that is done on, on air content or on hotel booking sometimes is a pipeline down to our, our servers. So this, this, this is, uh, these are all uh, interconnected. So if you book on OTA, if you book through uh, the travel port mobile applications, these are all different points of sale. And if the content has value, if it is competitive, definitely the customer will go there. Thank you so much, Raj. Um, we have several other questions on the Q&A that we will answer offline. Uh, I would just like to, to bring uh, quickly to the stage uh, some friends from Lebanon that we have here today with us. We have Ajwad and uh, Hiba from the, the operator that represents Travelport in Lebanon. And uh, I would like uh, quickly to get uh, an overview from your side, how did TMA assist you during this crisis moment? Um, thank you so much for, for giving us your feedback. And I would like just a, a quick um, answer from your side, how did this technology assist your customers in making the transition from working from the office to working from home. Uh, thank you, Joel, yeah. for giving me this opportunity. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel, for asking me this question. Okay, if, if Heba wants to answer, she can answer. Uh, I have no problem. Yeah, Heba, you can go on. Okay, thank you, Ajwad. Although the, although the Lebanese market uh, is a small market, but uh, the TMA is widely requested in the Lebanese market uh, due to many things, to many reasons. First of all, they, need, they don't need installation. Uh, they can use it anywhere without installation. Uh, due to COVID-19 situation, uh, you know, the Lebanese are working from home, but this product uh, widely help them to continue working uh, without uh, without going to the company and to the travel agency. Uh, in Lebanon, we use uh, multi-product from TTS, uh, such as uh, TTS uh, Consolidator, uh, TTS uh, Corporate, and the TMA, but uh, the TMA is the best uh, technology. I see it from my side. Thank you so much, Eva, and uh, thank you both for, for giving us just that short feedback on the impact that our technology had in your subscribers. I believe that you all can see my screen. Uh, we will have more webinars like this one. Tomorrow we will have a webinar that uh, teaches travel agents to work from home or from anywhere with Travelport Mobile Agent and TTS Web Agent is a webinar that I highly recommend for you to, to share with your subscribers, to share with your network so that they can take a look more in detail about TMA and TTS Web Agent. And on Wednesdays until the end of July, we will keep the TTS talks around the world the next one will be Europe, then Africa, and another one until the end of July, which you can see in our website, tts.com slash webinars, and you're good to go and register in the next ones. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar today. Uh, feel free to like TTS on our social networks, YouTube channel, LinkedIn, Facebook, you can reach our website, tts.com, and if you have any question, any commercial inquiry, 
feel free to reach us at sales at tts.com. Thank you so much for the speakers. Uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today. It was an absolute pleasure having you today with us. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Good luck to everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Nice meeting you, Diana. Hi to Loretta. Thank you. Have a good day. All, all the best. Thank you so much. And see you Bye. soon. You Inshallah. Too. Thank you. Inshallah. Bye. 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 Bye, Loretta. Bye, my dear.